Hi YouTube, Brian James and Micro Four Thirds Guy with you once again on this Saturday for another Saturday chat. I hope everyone's well, I hope everyone's uh, enjoying the little bit of sunshine, at least that's what we had here today, so it's, it's good. A um, couple of things, I've been looking through some of the, uh, the comments on the posts. I read as many of the comments as I possibly can, so to all of you, thank you very much for leaving the comments. And if there's anything you do want to comment amongst these videos, please leave a, a comment below on this. I'd really be uh, pleased to see your comments come through. I do read them all, I can't answer them all, um, but um, I usually manage to read almost all of them if I can. And there's some really interesting comments th come through. But there was one came through a little bit earlier today, which um, stopped and made me think. And it was from a guy called Timothy Latour. And um, first of all, to, to Timothy, to uh, everybody over there, I know it's uh, Memorial Weekend this weekend. Um, and um, because I'm an, ex, I'm an ex-serviceman myself, uh, I'm a service veteran of the Royal Air Force. But I also managed to serve for five years alongside their colleagues in the United States Air Force. Um, it means something to me today. So everybody who's watching over in the United States on uh, for Memorial Day and your Memorial Weekend, just let you know that uh, you've got some people thinking of you over this side of the pond as well. And I know when it comes to Remembrance Sunday on November the 11th, or the closest Sunday then, an awful lot of my colleagues in the United States also send their, their thoughts and wishes as well. So um, to all my American viewers, I hope that uh, Memorial Weekend goes really well for you. Um, Timothy um, put a comment on a little bit earlier and asked me to, to have a, a 10 minute think about the uh, merits between APS-C and Micro Four Thirds systems. And I started thinking about it and I can't really pull it just down to APS-C. Now what I will say is, uh, before you find out my main conclusions, you'll have to keep a watch for them. If you do get the chance, if you haven't subscribed already, hit the subscribe button below. Um, it's now a grey button rather than a red one by the looks of things. So hit the uh, the subscribe button, ding the little bell to get notifications. And uh, give me a thumbs up and, and like if you would on this one as well please. Because that helps YouTube to spread the videos to more and more people to see. But <laughs> it's a difficult one because I... What I give on these videos, I'm, I'm not a great one for giving you will or this is right or this is wrong. These are, these are my feelings on things more than anything else, based on facts, based on what people report and based on what I, I read. I'm an electronics engineer originally, so I've got a good technical understanding of things. But that doesn't necessarily mean I'm right. So these are my opinions. So if you disagree, then that's fine. I'm quite happy for you to disagree. So first of all, what is APS-C? Well, it's slightly different depending on what format you're using. APS-C is normally what's um, quoted by Canon uh, for their cameras. But basically, it's a crop sensor. And the history of sensor sizes goes back to the beginning of digital photography. Large sensors were difficult and extremely expensive to make. And so what happened effectively in when the first cameras came out, we've been using 35 millimeter film um, and we couldn't really get a sensor that big, cheap enough to be able to, to easily buy and to be stable enough. So the, a smaller sensor seemed the, the logical thing. It went for this APS-C, which is if you take 35 millimeter film as being the standard full frame size, so when we talk about full frame, that's what we're talking about. You had larger formats than that, full frame, but you've also got the APS-C. And on Canon cameras, it's about a 1.6 to 1 ratio. Now what that means is your field of view, if you were shooting with a 100mm lens on a full frame or a 35mm camera, the, the field of view, the, the angle of view between the, between the sides, um, on a 100mm lens on a full frame, if you put that 100mm lens onto an APS-C camera, it will give an equivalent field of view, which is zoomed in to about 160 mil. Now, if you're using Nikon or Sony um, cameras, or a lot of the other ones, Fuji's there, I think Fuji are the same, they are using a 1.5 to one crop ratio. So in other words, if you put the 100 mil lens onto the front of that camera, it would have an effective field of view of a 150 millimeter lens. Micro Four Thirds, has an equivalent field of view of two to one. So that would be equivalent, putting the 100mm lens on that is equivalent on a full frame to see in the field of view of a 200mm lens. I hope that makes sense. There are changes as well. A smaller sensor also means that 
if you have the same number of megapixels, the same number of pixels on the on the, the camera, because you've got it in a much smaller size, uh, micro four thirds is about a quarter the size of full frame. It's a two to one ratio, so everything's doubled up. So um, effectively, it's a quarter the size, twice as long, twice as high ish, because it's not the same ratio, but effectively twice as long, twice as high means that you can get four of them in there. It's an area rule. So therefore, to try and get the same megapixel count, the pixels themselves must be a quarter of the size. Now that has implications insofar as uh, how sensitive they are to light, because they are a quarter of the physical size. And that has implications insofar as um, the, uh, the, the dynamic range, the difference between dark and light. Keep on using these terms like dynamic range. So if you're not familiar with it, it's the it's the difference between the darkest um, thing which can be rendered and the lightest thing that can be rendered without going totally black or totally white. If that makes sense. Now, there's a, another aspect which comes into this, which is the depth of field. And as you alter the focal, the aperture, um, the depth of field correspondingly increases. So if you were on f2 uh, on a full frame lens on a micro four thirds you're effectively on was it five six or f8 i can't remember you know it's, it's but anyway basically it's it's a deeper depth of field you get the idea i'm not going to try and do the, the figures because that's not what i do but it's a, a deeper depth of field with the same lens on and there's lots of reasons why i'm not going to go into it here but back to the original question is insofar as the difference between the two why do I prefer Micro Four Thirds? Well, first of all, to get more light in, you, with a bigger sensor, you need more physical light going through the hole into there to get the, the coverage on a bigger sensor. Um, and obviously on this, you need four times as much light going through. Now, don't get confused. A 100mm lens on a Micro Four Thirds is still a 100mm lens on a full frame. It's how the angle which it goes under the sensor is because the sensor is smaller in that scheme but it's still 100 mil lens is still 100 mil lens and an aperture of f2 is still an aperture of f2 it's the amount of light which goes through it and there's a there's a, a, a math, math, mathematical equation dictates that so if you need f2 at 100 hundredth of a second to get your shot on a full frame you still need f2 at a hundredth of a second to get your exposure right on a micro four thirds or an APS-C it's the other things which change around it. But to get more light in, to get that equivalent light in to fit the bigger sensor, you need more glass. More glass means more weight. More weight means um, harder to carry, larger, longer, whatever it is. And this is why Micro Four Thirds to me is a really good system. The cameras themselves, some of the mirrorless cameras now on the full frame aren't any bigger. In fact, some are smaller than some of the Micro Four Thirds cameras. The, the G9, which I'm um, taking this video on at the moment, is quite a physically large camera. It's quite heavy, it's magnesium bodied, but it's solid, it's, it's, a, it's a big solid camera in the hand. The big difference for Micro Four Thirds for me, and these are all generalizations, so before anybody says, I've got an XYZ lens, which is lighter than the equivalent on Micro Four Thirds, I know these things are the case, but as a generalization, Micro Four, lens, Micro Four Thirds lenses tend to be smaller, and lighter. Simple as that. Tend to be. So for me, the advantage of that is that we've got smaller light lenses than either APS-C, because it's still a bigger sensor, and full frame, which bigger sensor again. The other thing I like about the Micro Four Thirds is the aspect ratio, the four to three aspect ratio. Now that's nothing to do with APS-C and things. That's to do with the fact that the sensor's made in that particular style. You could have something with an APS-C size or even a full frame size, which is a four to three ratio. So it's just because this has been the chosen one for this particular, um, this particular um, uh, type of camera that we have that four to three ratio. I personally like it. I think it, it looks more aesthetically pleasing. But that's neither here nor there. So why is APS-C still here? There's an interesting thing because APS-C cameras tend to be the, the cheaper cousins of the full frames in very similar bodies. Um, I've, for instance, I've been out shooting today on a Canon 7D, which is a, an APS-C camera, and it was almost identical size to the 5D Mark II full frame that I had. So what's the advantage and disadvantage? Well, obviously APS-C spe specific lenses tend to be smaller than the full frame equivalents. And that's fine, 
because in the same way as I've just said about the Micro Four Thirds, APS-C is, is comparatively smaller than a full frame for what needs to come through. But most APS-C cameras and full frame cameras will share a common mount. Now in the Canon, an APS-C mount, for instance on the 7D, will take the full frame, the EF lenses, which fit the full frame cameras. But they also have a, a slightly different mount and this is to do with the distance between the mirror and the back of the lens because these things come together uh, to stop them hitting each other. If you get um, EF-S lenses which will only work on APS-C cameras. Nikon have a similar sort of thing with their DX lenses and it, it basically these are the lenses which are designed specifically to go on to APS-C cameras in the range uh, with that mount but the Canon and the Nikon both have a, a, a similar, uh, both have a joint mount which will allow you to use the APS-C specific or the full frame and the full frame one, Canon for instance, I refer to Canon because that's what I'm used to using, Canon would have the L series lenses which will work on any of the standard APS-C and full frame bodies. So you could be using an L series lens which is considerably bigger because it's got a bigger um, sensor again to fill or the EFS lenses which are specifically designed for the APS-C. But this brings us into a situation now where we are changing. I think the world is changing in a big way. Full frame cameras are coming down in price. They could be down in size, camera body wise at least. So where the price advantage used to be on the um, APS-C cameras, it's becoming less and less obvious. The starting level of the Canon mirrorless cameras are considerably lower. And the other thing is as well with mirrorless cameras, there are less moving parts. You don't have the mirror box and things in the way there. And you've got more choice of lenses because um, you're not having that mirror. The mirror was a limiting factor for putting a, a, an AFS lens on. Although it's where it actually hits the, the sensor, you can get to the point where it's too narrow, the output from the lens to fill the whole sensor. So there are difficulties on that. But I'm presuming, and this is a presumption, this isn't fact, don't go out and quote me on it, it's not guaranteed on this, but I'm thinking that you will find less and less investment in APS-C and more and more investment in full frame. Now there are differences on that because the Fuji, the XT sort of lines on the Fuji are very much on, an, on a crop sensor uh, platform and they are very very successful so you're not going to see the end of it. But the Micro Four Thirds for me fits, it's good, and for me, I wouldn't personally be looking at another APS-C type camera. If I was going back to the, the larger sensors, I would be going for another full frame again, if that were the case, with the limitations, because the APS-C is not giving me any of the, particularly any of the size advantages. Uh, it is giving us a price advantage, but it's not giving the size advantages for me. Quality-wise, well, there is a quality insofar as an APS-C will still give a better um, dynamic range. It will tend to um, be better in low light conditions than a Micro Four Thirds, but it won't be as good in low light conditions as a full frame. All these things are advantages and disadvantages. Personally, I find with the advancement, what's happening insofar as artificial intelligence, AI, what's coming through from the, the camera phone industry, I think it's going to nullify an awful lot of problems uh, in the near future. There's going to be an awful lot done in the camera. Even in the DSLRs, sorry, in the mirrorless, I'm, I'm going to discount DSLRs for the moment because effectively I think they're on the way out. But the, in, the, um, in the, the, the standard sort of camera, what is, constitutes a standard camera, I think the eye side is going to really start coming in and um, open the game somewhat. So where we had low light problems on any of the sensors, they're just about going to go. If you think about how big a sensor on a mobile phone is, it's you know we're, we're talking about a different sort of league but then they're using multiple lenses and multiple sensors and additive um, systems to put them together so it's a little way down the line I think on that I did say about depth of field and of course as you go up towards the full frame so from micro four thirds up to APS-C and then to full frame you are going to have that much shallower depth of field at uh, open f-stops. So when you get to the uh, f1.8, f2s, you're going to have a much shallower depth of field. And for things like portrait photography, where you really want to separate the background from the foreground, that's great. But we always go on about the, 
the, sharp, the, the depth of field differences on smaller sensors like the APS-C and the Micro Four Thirds has been a bad thing. But it's not always that way. If you're shooting landscapes or if you're shooting something which requires a really wide depth of field, then the Micro Four Thirds and the APS-C have an advantage over the full frame. You've, you know, if you're shooting something which is at f16, if your lens will only go to f16, f16 on an APS-C compared to full frame is going to give you an even better depth of range, a depth of field. So something really close is going to be in focus and out to infinity. On micro four thirds, the theory says that even closer will be in focus out to infinity on f16. So when we look on one thing being a, a, an advantage or and a disadvantage, for different shooting styles, they can turn and what was a disadvantage is actually an advantage to you. So, the conclusion. What's the difference between Micro Four Thirds and APS-C? No, no different to what it is between full frame and APS-C and we've lived with that for the last 20 years. So, uh, my general word on this is, if you are using APS-C, if it is doing what you're happy with, carry on using it. Don't change format just because some guy in a video tells you that that's going to be better or worse. You've got to work out what it is. And remember, if you bought a camera which was a really good camera five years ago, it doesn't stop being a good camera five years later just because of time. What happens is technology around it changes and the extremities of that technology will allow other things to happen. But a good camera is still a good camera. So long as it's taking the shots and working properly, it's still a good camera. And if you are happy with an APS-C format and it does everything you need it to with the lenses that you have and you're happy with the weight and you're happy with the size and you're happy with the results of the output from that sensor, then you have the right camera for yourself. If you are using Micro Four Thirds, then again, if it's good weight, good size and everything's working properly and, every, and it's giving you the results for the photographs that you want to take, then it's a good camera and it's the right camera. That goes for anything. You see, the thing is that even if you were to compare a full frame camera or an APS-C camera to a medium format, you would really say that the full frame camera has a lousy depth of field compared to the medium format because a medium format with an equivalent lens will have an even shallower depth of field. So it's all relative. So in conclusions, stick to the camera you've got. If you are wanting to change to a different format, work out what advantages you're going to get from that format and disadvantages you're going to get from that format and play to those. It may be you go an opposite direction to what I've done with the Micro Four Thirds. But the Micro Four Thirds for me, compared to APS-C, compared to full frame, compared to medium format, the Micro Four Thirds is hitting what's just perfect for me and the results I get out of my cameras to me are stunning. What do you think? Leave me a comment below. I'm really interested to hear what you have to say. Um, it's, it, it, it is a, a, it's a controversial subject because it's subjective. It's what people feel. So leave me a comment below. Um, if you are shooting APS-C and you're happy with it, tell me why. If you are contemplating changing formats and you want to go from one to the other, again, let me know. Tell me why. I don't say that Micro Four Thirds is the perfect format for everyone. I just happened to call myself the Micro Four Thirds guy because somebody else called me that on a shoot because I was quite happily shouting about how good I thought Micro Four Thirds was. It's not the only format and it's not the only correct format. Remember, an awful lot of people shoot us on things like one-inch sensors on some of the bridge cameras and I've seen some stunning results on them. Leave me a subscription. Click, yeah, sorry, click on the subscription. I knew I'd get it wrong. I always do. Click on a subscription if, if you haven't done so already. I'm up nearly 2,000 subscribers and I really appreciate each and every one of you for subscribing to the channel because you're the ones that keep on promoting it and getting more people to see them. So thank you. Um, if you want to see notifications sent through whenever I upload a new video, hit the little bell beside it. Um, and the other thing for me is give me a thumbs up and a like, please, on this one. It really is important giving those thumbs up and likes. There's two reasons. One, it does tend to get YouTube's algorithms to spread the video so more people who aren't aware of me get it put onto their home homepage so they can see it. And two, I'm just paranoid about numbers. I want to see the numbers go up. So please put the numbers up because I get paranoid and think people don't like me. <laughs> Apart from that, thanks to everybody who's given the subscription up to now um, through the PayPal link for buy a coffee underneath. It really is appreciated. Um, it's 
paying actually for some fuel because I'm going to be going out doing the next stage of my Hadrian's Wall walk in the next couple of days, which is really enjoyable. I'm thoroughly enjoying those. If you haven't checked out the Hadrian's Wall walk videos, they are just a photo montage, but they're, they're, they're laid back, they're enjoyable. You'll see them on my, on my line. If you just click on my channel, you'll see them there. I don't get a huge amount of subscribers on those, but they're the, actually the thing which drives my passion to do these sort of videos. I'm much more interested in doing the, the photo walks than I act, am actually talking about camera specs. But the camera specs videos get the, get the views and that encourages people to go on the channel. So if you do get the chance to see one of my photo walk videos, please look onto them. I'd thoroughly love to see you uh, on one of those. But as I say, I think the um, the next one is going on from the Roman Army Museum um, at uh, Greenhead, and I'll be heading further east on there. I've got a few church shoots to go and do. Oh, ah, that reminds me. Um, I'm going to be uploading another one of these talks tomorrow morning, um, and I've got a really special thing which I'm going to be asking your help on. I've got a colleague who's doing something really special, and I'm going to be asking your help on, on that. So look out for the next video, um, because it really is important, and it leads on to something which is going to be going on over the summer. So once again, this is Brian James, I'm Micro Four Thirds Guy, saying have a wonderful weekend. As I say to my friends in America, hope uh, your memorial weekend is uh, very, very uh, special and sacred to you, because... Um, just remember you have people thinking about uh, about your veterans over here um, and it's 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 really wonderful to to be part of that community and um, it's wonderful to have you lot as part of the community on my channel have a great weekend don't forget get your camera whatever format whether it's micro four thirds APS-C full frame get your camera go out and take some photographs enjoy it see you next time bye bye mm -hmm.